You're using not the sharp end of the needle, but the blunt end. And this is the canary grass that we're going to be working with next. That's right. You have to be really careful because this hurts worse than a paper cut. Why are you wrapping it around your finger like that? To flatten it out and so you rub it, flatten it, so then it becomes flat. And if it's not really flat, then you do it on the other side too. And you soak this in water for a little bit? It, you don't really have to. You could run water through it and it'll be ready. You're not measuring it to the weft but you actually want it to cross the warp. And so it'll be just a hair thicker than your warps. If you make it too thick, it's good. they're gonna pile up on top of one another. If you make it too thin, it's going to have space. So you have to really be careful to gauge. Okay. And you may not do it right the first and second time, but after you do it a while, you know just how wide you want it. So I'm going to measure my warp. Right, because you're crossing the warp. And just a hair thicker than the warp. Okay. And once you get it, kick your needle and go straight down. Because it has such a straight grain, you just go, just pull it down. I'm just going to compare again. It looks like that one might be a little bit too thick. I want you to take a look at it. It is. So okay. could I take off a little bit from this one? It's okay on the top. It's just down the bottom. I don't know how that happened because usually it's, yeah, because So here's the bottom, it still looks like it's a little bit too thick. Yes, uh huh. Thin it out. Yeah. When you're working with a canary grass like that, is it dry or is it damp? It's damp. And how long did you let it soak for around? It doesn't have to soak very long. If you just run the water through it, it's really, the inside is really water absorbent. So a good thing to mention when you've harvested your grass and you're ready to use it is you want to make sure you you have a piece that's going to wrap nicely around your finger and that tells you it's nice and pliable and if it doesn't do that it would be good for an overlay false embroidery technique and you want to scrape gently the inside this nice lighter color you just want to scrape it to get it nice and clean and then you're going to do that again with the piece that you've just created that you're going to be working with and, and it's a little bit more fragile so you want to just really take your time and be nice and gentle with it that also helps um, uncurl the grass it gives it a nice straight flat edge We're going to start the false embroidery after this third row of compact twine because we're going to begin our secondary design on our basket. So depending on what color you want showing, you can have this really nice inside that has a light, almost pale white color, or the outside of the grass that's that really pretty golden color. If you want the golden part to shine, you're going to face your grass down with the gold touching your first warp. And what you're going to do is you're just going to line them up and hold it in place. And you're just going to continue your weave right on top of that to secure it. And this first placement isn't actually going to show in your design. That's just holding, anchoring it 
so that you can weave. And now that it's in place, we're going to wrap it around this left weaver, which is going to be our working weaver on the next stitch. So we're going to slowly wrap it around the weft. We're going to make our X and finish our stitch going back behind the warp. We're going to pull our warps nice and tight, nice and snug, and we're just going to give a little tug, not too hard, on the canary grass to make it nice and snug. And if we turn our basket over, we can see that you don't see the false embroidery stitch because it just went along that working weaver in the front of the basket. So it's basically between your warp and your weft. And we're going to do that in one solid line all the way across the basket. So we're going to take our grass, wrap it around your left side, make your X left, right over left, bring your working weaver behind the warp, Just give it a nice little tug, make it nice and tight. Around. Make your X. Working weaver behind the warp. And the false embroidery, you can see that it's an S twist compared to the Z twist of the rest of the basket. They're going this way. And if you look closely, you can see that it's the design itself is filling the space between the two warps. I'm doing this false embroidery with the canary grass, but you can also do this style false embroidery with the maiden's hair fern. So I've done the overlay. I'm going to do one row of false embroidery, eight, um, eight false embroidered stitches, eight plain twine stitches all the way around. Oh, you're finished to, to and the then inside. I'm going to do the overlay again. Do three and then do the overlay and then I will finish with an edge. Well, you start your false embroidery one stitch before the actual false embroidered stitch. So I do seven of these twine stitches, and on the seventh one, I will put my false embroidery in, and I'll start that, and then I'll do eight stitches here. I'll just get to that point. So this is seven. Just want to put those stitches close together, close in, tug. And sometimes you'll get one that wants to kind of be a little higher. You just have to work with it, get it into place. There. You want to keep it from twisting, but you also, you don't, you want to keep them kind of touching. 
So sometimes you'll have one, like just one stitch, the way the grass is going around, it, it wants to separate. So you wanna kinda keep this snug around so that it lays nicely. There, so that's touching. Sometimes you just have to take it out and do the process one more time. And I will do eight of these. And you just try to get them the same size, same size stitches all the way across. And there's eight. And then I'll drop this. So after the basket dries, when you're finished, will you then snip off those um, ends of the canary grass? Yeah. Yeah, you just let, I usually wait to the very end to snip everything so that I can do some last minute tugs mm -hmm. here and there. I see that the tails of the canary grass, when you end, are left to the front. Do you tuck in what you've snipped or? Actually, no. Okay. You'll just come pretty close. And that's just part of how it looks. Mm -hmm. So same concept as before, but just with a different material. This is made in hair fern. Placing that in the stitch before you begin your design. And this is a little bit, um, it's not as flexible. It's a little bit tougher material than the canary grass. So you just have to get a feel for it. It can split easier in my experience or crack. So you just wanna be careful, patient with it. If you harvest your uh, maiden hair fern a little too late, what kind of problems do you come across? It's tougher, in my experience, or it cracks. It's not as pliable. It's just it needs to be tender um, and soft. You have to just go out and sort of check it. You know, at the beginning of spring, and I think you just start, you know, looking at it, checking it, and uh, when it feels like it's at a place where it's just right, then you, you harvest. But I'm not sure, honestly, my dad gets this for me, so he would be the person to ask. You see how the design, I have one, two, three, this is my fourth stitch. So what I'm working on is creating um, the fish rack design that was by Flora Mather, um, using the false embroidery after the um, bottom was completed, before I started going up the sides we drew out the design. First had to count all of the warps. Um, and there was originally 54 warps, um, but it was recommended that I add two warps to make the count 56. And then the 56 is divisible by what, eight? So you can see here the X's are the false embroidery. So I did uh, four, and then I did three of the compact twine, and then four false embroidery, and then three compact twine. Um, you could see between each false embroidery row, we just did a row of compact twine. Um, and there's four rows of false embroidery. When you um, put your grass in, you actually put it in at zero. It's one, two, three in count between the stitches, but it's counted as zero when you start 
adding it. I'm attaching yeah. it right here, and that's, that's zero. Right. You're right. And then that's the first one. Right. Two, three, four. Right. Yep. Okay. And when you move over, the it, sometimes people have a hard time. But if you leave these little pieces in, then it tells you where you can where you'll move over. Yeah. So I always leave that in. That I know that is zero. Yeah. And I know I'm going to add. This one here, it, it's the tail is up here. On my next row, uh, I'm going to anchor it, do the zero on this right. one here. That's correct. Okay. You always start with, uh, was it stitch zero? Um, because that's where you're going to anchor your canary grass for your design. So I'm going to do a compact twine here. And now, now I'm going to start my stitch zero. So now, um, when you lay your canary grass down, because I want the shiny yellow side to show, I'm going to put the canary grass upside down. So I'll have the white side facing up. And I'm going to compact twine around that to anchor it into place. <laughs> now I'm going to start my false embroidery. So I'm going to take the canary grass and wrap it around the uh, working weaver. I'm going to hold the working weaver down with the other weaver. Then I'm going to uh, adjust the tension on the canary grass by just pulling down. You can see it just lays a little flatter. And then repeat. So take your canary grass, wrap it around the working weaver. Uh, hold the working weaver down with your other weaver. And then pull your canary grass down to adjust the tension. You can make sure that the that the false embroidery is close together by just pulling the tension of the, the weavers. So now I'm between um, my fish rack design. So now I do uh, three, do three um, compact twine. So this is one. Two. and three. I'm going to snip my canary grass, have a little tail, or leave a tail. Now I'll start my next fish rack, and remember that previous uh, fish rack, the tail up here is telling me don't start there, anchor the canary grass on the next, the next spot. I love that shape. It's not mm. straight up. Mm -hmm. See, that's what the false embroidery does. It has that beautiful shape to it because because uh -huh. the false embroidery takes more room. If you want it straight, though, you can pull it real tight and have it, you know, flat up and down. But I love <laughs> that shape. Yeah, no, I'll stick with that. Yeah. I'm cutting it and it's getting all jagged and funny like that. Does that matter? Let me feel it. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Usually it's straight. Usually Give me your straight. knife. Oh, here I have the knife. Because then I tried to straighten out with scissor and I don't think yeah. that really worked either. No, see, you can do it easier with a knife. Because it's just following the... Yeah, because it has a grain to it. Anytime you're not happy with it, take it out because you'll never be happy with it. As I'm using the canary grass, I'm noticing like this outer layer of like the yellow part. It's kind of flaking up. So I have to take out this piece of canary grass and find a different piece. Maybe it's one of those that, you know, when it's growing, and it gets wind checked when the wind blows the grass. It might, see, because it, 
it feels like it. So just know that for the future. Right. Yes. You don't want to use that piece, yes. you want right. to just find feel a different piece. Good. You could tell the difference. Right, coming. you can tell the difference. That's why you don't pick grass right along the roadside. You always pick it where there's, you know, like, the, uh, in fact, Sora told me, even the maiden hair fern, pick it where there's, like, salmon berries. If it's in, in there, then they don't get wind checked. And we wind didn't check. do that. They were right alongside the road. Mm -hmm.